Today I want to give you a tour of puzzles and survival, getting a look at some of the basic mechanics in the game to help you figure out if you want to play and you're in luck. I'm starting a big group that's going to all restart on a new server together. The link is going to be in the description to join my Discord server if you want to check it out and you don't have to commit long term even if you just want to binge for the weekend. Use the link in the description, join my Discord server, and you can group up with us to battle in puzzles and survival and check out the game. Before I begin, allow me to take a moment to thank the sponsor of this video, and that is Amazon. If you use the link in the description to download the game, that'll let the sponsor of this video know that you found the game through me. It'll take you to a place where you can download through the Amazon App Store, where you also, if you want, can pick up some Amazon coins. Amazon coins are a way to get the things that you want in game at a discount from what you might normally pay. And you don't have to just use those Amazon coins in Puzzles and Survival. You can use them in any game that is in the Amazon App Store. So if you spend in mobile games and the games that you play are in the Amazon App Store, this seems like a pretty good way to save a little bit of cash on the purchases that you might have made. As an example, at the time of this recording, you can buy $100 worth of Amazon coins for only 82 bucks, which let's be honest, when you're spending in mobile games, it sure is nice to get a little bit of a discount. Thank you again to Amazon for sponsoring this video, and the link is in the description to download the game from the Amazon App Store and also to get Amazon coins. The first thing we need to do is get a look around your city in this game, and naturally, your headquarters is one of the core buildings that determines how high you can level up the other buildings within your city. Now, there are a number of extremely important buildings, starting, of course, with the troop training buildings. There are a number of units in this game that I've unlocked so far, and of course, they're just T1 for now, because we're going to do our big restart and then really dive in and level things up. But there are fighters, and okay, good luck fighting zombies with a baseball bat, buddy. Shooters who are using crossbows at the lowest levels, but you can see here that there are obviously many tiers of troops, and as you rank up the tier of troops, their stats increase very substantially. Those T12s look absolutely nasty and are probably a very long journey to unlock. Also, there are riders because obviously during the apocalypse, you got to be cool and ride a motorcycle. Much more nimble than a car. You can get through some tough places here. Holy good lord, that is a decked out motorcycle. Okay, yeah, where do I get one of these phantoms? T12 rider camp. Now, in addition to training troops and having your headquarters, there are, of course, many, many buildings in here, but one I really do want to highlight for you is the research center, because research is often very critical to how your units perform. You may have a higher tier of troop, but when you have better research, you will wreck your enemies. Now, this research ranges from development economy, military, and honestly, wow, there are many tiers of some of these things, even scramble Level 31 Research Center required. So I would have a long way to go to unlock all of these things. But at the basic level, things like military, for example, increase your attack, your march speed uh, for specific units, your march size, and so on. So there's a number of choices that you'll ultimately have to make because you will, at some point, be resource-gated in this game. In the upper left, you can see I've got some resources here which you can collect in your city. Okay, city production is generally not the main way that you're gonna get resources in this style of game, but the resources you can get at the start of the game include food and wood, and there are, I believe, two other currencies that will show up later on for resources that you'll need. But in addition, there are virology labs, and these virology labs give you anti-serum. Anti-serum is really important for working on your heroes. Now, your heroes go with you when you enter into battle, and you can power them up in a number of ways. Each of these heroes, uh, which, if we get a look here, has attack, defense, and hit points. You can enhance them by getting more of their puzzle pieces, it looks like, is the icon, but we'll call it shards for now. And they have troop skills that, of course, get stronger as well, in addition to some hero skills. And if you want to see where some of these are deployed, I'll show you in just a bit. Also, the color of the unit is really, really important. Uh, this is particularly relevant in the puzzles portion of the game. And again, I'm in the beginning of the game, but that's what I've seen so far. So since I'm mentioning the puzzles, and the game is called Puzzles and Survival, what is the puzzle aspect of this game? So 
There is a campaign off to the side from the main city building and battling that you do, where if I make my way into this campaign, I've already made it to chapter five, we'll do this mission. You can see the enemies have certain colors, your troops or heroes have certain colors, and if I hit challenge here, I select the hero formation I wanna use. I'm gonna go with this formation for now. We're gonna hit challenge. It thinks I might have some better heroes. We're just gonna go with it. And I can show you the match three puzzle aspect of this game. Now, the way this works is that you ultimately match up uh, rows and columns of at least three of the same color in the puzzle. And then boom, it'll do an attack. Here I matched four. But you see that some of those attacks are weak and some of those attacks are strong. This is because there are colors that counter each other, which you can see in the upper left. Now, I haven't put much thought into what counters what, and I think in the harder levels, that will be much more relevant. But in the early levels, you can kind of smash your way through this pretty easily, uh, matching things up as you go, as you see I'm doing here. And you don't have to be terribly exceptional at doing that to get some really good combos. And it's pretty satisfying when you do combo out, also, there are special items, like I'll use this even though maybe I shouldn't. The grenade will go and uh, destroy some of these nearby tiles. But you also may have noticed when the grenade shot through that it's powering up my heroes. What that means is that once the hero bars get full, they get to use their special ability, which now you can see I have one special ability available. I'm actually going to save that for now for when I get to the next level. And you can see there is a turn counter that tells you when the enemy is ultimately going to attack you. I've got two more turns and I took them out. There are three more rounds and oh yes, you can see my heroes are all powering up now. Let me jump to the boss. Okay, here we are on the boss stage. I saved up a bunch of my abilities to go smash this thing. I'm gonna use this guy's ability who buffs all my other units. I'm gonna use her, I think it's a chainsaw, do an AOE damage to everybody. Her ability does, I think, specific damage to one unit. There we go. And then the final ability, slashing my way through. So, now I'm in a much better position to go smash this boss. And let's try to do some combos. Yeah. Okay. Boss barely did any damage. His big attack comes in four turns. I think I'm honestly kind of overpowered for this level. So, I'm probably just going to kill this boss before I even get to the point where he's going to do anything too difficult. Oh. Okay, spoke too soon, team's getting wrecked, but probably okay. I'm gonna match the bomb, does big damage, boss is down, smash the final guy, and we're through. The last thing I wanna show you very briefly is the world map, and if we just get a look around, you can see my sanctuary. I'm fairly low level on this account because I'm planning to do that restart. Link is in the description. Please do join us, it's gonna be a lot of fun. There are zombies on the map that you can target, and if you defeat them, you get a small amount of rewards. You have a limited amount of energy that you can use to go do that with, um, which you can see in the upper left. I believe it is the soda can <laughs> currency over there. So if I find maybe a low level zombie, I can do a search to do that. Zombie level three. Uh, I can beat a zombie level three, right? T1 units, 200. I have more than that, right? I'm gonna do the recommended heroes to go with me. I'm going to quick select my units and we're going to dispatch. So you can see that does use five of the, so I'm gonna go with soda can currency until I figure out the actual name. My troops march on the way. If I had emojis, I could smash some of those out. We march over. Once I defeat this, I'll get those rewards. And this seems like a pretty important thing to do with your, uh, I don't know, soda can energy every day because the rewards are pretty decent here. Victory, I attacked, level three infected and I get rewards, experience, food. Wow, I actually got a trophy. Okay, these are trophies, a hero fragment. Cool, that's amazing. The main way that I'm used to actually getting resources in this style of game is to actually go and gather them from the map, which is the case here. You can see there are farms. I've also got lumber mills here. And if I just get a look around, there really are like a number of other buildings here that I still need to get accustomed to, like these alliance buildings, being an alliance, by the way, absolutely crucial in this game, which is why I'm starting a really big group to go check it out together, to really learn how the game works. And I have a suspicion that in this style of game, often a lot of merging is how you make like a super strong alliance because, aha, here they are, zombie layers. You have to launch rally attacks on these things. I mean, we've, 
We've seen these styles of mechanics before with barbarians and barbarian forts, or in this case, zombies and zombie layers. Ah, and there are, ha, HQ 15 required. So I knew there were other resource types here, and that's totally one of them. That's got to be oil, right? Playing a new game for a weekend binge is always a good time. You can use the link in the description to join my restart group. We're going to all try this out together and hopefully play for some number of months or years or conquer the server or merge with alliances ultimately to be able to do that. We'll see how it plays out. Link is in the description for both that and the Amazon coins. Thank you again for Amazon for sponsoring this video. And I'll see you in Puzzles and Survival.